Okay, so someone asked me this morning if it was possible that when in the inventory control form here, when you're choosing different selections from here, if this product quantity is zero for that corresponding selection, then you should get a pop-up message that states that it's zero, and basically it's meant to be an advisory that it's zero and you need to do something about it. So that certainly can be done. It's very easy. It takes about five minutes to implement. Basically what you're doing is you're going to add code that says when this is changed, when this is updated, check the value. And if that value is zero, then the message box should open. So that's the first iteration. I'm then going to show you a second iteration because in my opinion, if it's reached zero, then something has already gone wrong that we really should be proactive. Think of two use cases. If this product is something you are selling, if it's zero, you can't sell something you don't have. If it's something that you use, some kind of supply, well, you can't do the task if you don't have the supply. So I'll certainly honor this person's request and show them how to do zero, but then the second iteration is going to have, rather than a constant, you're gonna compare it to a field that this value will get compared to a field. And if it's below, say, we'll call it recommended minimum, then you will get the prompt. So the first one is comparing to a static value. The second one is gonna be compared to a variable. And how do we do that? What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new field to the underlying table. So right now, first aid spray has various attributes. We're gonna add another attribute and that attribute will be the minimum value. And it's different depending on the supply. So let's do the basic, uh, let's do the first iteration. So you want inventory control to be open and you want to click on view and you want to click on design view. Now there are a bunch of ways we could do this, but we're just going to have the code execute when you click on this drop down and make a change. So with a product description selected, go to on click, click on the ellipsis and choose code builder. You can see it says combo click. So it's the click functionality of the combo box. So first we're going to check if me, and again, me refers to the object description attached to. So if me dot product quantity and this field is uh, a, uh, is a part of this object equals zero, oops, zero, not O. And if, so if that field on that object is equal to that value. So if this field on this object is equal to that value, then we want something to happen. MSG BOX, message box, that simple. And we're going to say, quantity is zero. Save this, close this, save this, and I will go to the actual production view. So as you can see, product quantity is zero. So if I choose red herb, that one's already 20. First aid spray, 35. Now I go to green herb, and that one's zero. Quantity is zero. Now you could say, well, are you sure it, it's timed correctly? So let's change it away from zero. And there you go. So that easy to get a message box. So the message box is a little odd because you don't actually have to create a separate object. You're not creating a form. You're not creating a report. You could do that if you want, if you want to have more functionality. But if you're just looking for a quick message box that just has um, an OK button that says, yeah, I read the message, that's really the easiest way to do it. So if you want more interactivity, if you want a form, 
and then maybe there's additional functionality that you want in the form, then you could do that. But if you're just looking for a, a straight up message that says, here's the advisory and now close out of the message, that's all it takes. So that's the first iteration. Now, as I said, the second iteration is rather than having a specific constant to look at, we're going to look instead at a, um, another field. Okay, so what we need to do is that means to the inventory table, actually let's close this, to the inventory table, right now this product description, product quantity, we need to add that new field that I mentioned. We're going to add, so we're going to go to design view, and we're going to choose, we're going to uh, rather uh, create a new field, um, min underscore rec. So the minimum recommended amount. This will be a number. And now we, now let's click on view. We get the advisory to save. We click on save. And now the minimum recommended amount. So basically, again, depending on the object, you might only want one or two. Not all objects have the same quantity. Uh, maybe one object is 50 gallons of something, so you only need one of it. Maybe something's only a couple ounces, so you need 50 of it. So let's just put in a range of numbers here. So let's do 5, let's do 10, and let's do 20. Okay, so we went to design mode. We created the minimum recommended number field, and now we entered in some values. So we close the table, and we go back to our inventory control form. We go back to design view, and what we're going to do is, when we first created this form, we linked it by click on here, go into data, and we linked it to the inventory table. Well, that that new value is in the inventory table, and therefore it will be accessible to this form. So if you go to add existing fields, so if you're on design, you go to add existing fields, and sure enough, that new field is there. So we'll just drag and drop it, get rid of the label. If you want, you can run this to make sure it's working. So we'll save it. So five for red herb, 10 for green herb. We've still getting our message since we haven't changed it yet. And 20 for first aid spray. If you want, we can go back here and double check. Five, 10, 20. Perfect. So now what we want to do is, there's a couple things you can do with this. You can either hide it so it's a control that you make decisions based upon, but isn't facing the um, the user, or you can hide it. Uh, or excuse me, you can either hide it or you can make it visible to the user. Your de your decision. In this case, we're going to hide it from the viewer, from the user, I should say. So we go to property sheets, and we go to format. So with it highlight with minimum recommended highlighted or selected I should say, you go to visible and you go to no. So they will not see it. So we now go back to that code we're working on. So we come to the product description, we select that, we go back to event, on click is where we're working, click on the ellipsis, it opens to it. Now instead of checking to a constant, we're going to check to that field. As we said we've added that field to the form so we can now address it just like we addressed product quantity we can now address that field so me dot is it min recommended yep there it is uh but rather than equal it should be less it, if it's below the minimum recommended then you want that to happen so we save this close it save the document uh sorry my apologies i keep saying document today the form the object and then 
let's double check our inventory table to make sure that the numbers correspond. So minimum recommended is 20. It should not happen here. Minimum recommended is 10. It doesn't happen. It does happen here, but we'll, let's, we'll change this to 5, though, just so you know the 0 isn't triggering it anymore. And this one doesn't trigger it either. So we will close that. And now we run this. So red herb, we shouldn't get the message. Green herb, there we go. Now we have to fix the text. It still says quantity is zero. And then first aid spray. So let's go back to our table. So we'll close this. We'll go back to our table and we'll just mix things up a little bit. We'll make this be 15. So it's below the minimum recommended. Close this. And you're going to want to do this. You don't want to presume that just one set of data worked. You're going to want to make sure that um, it's not a coincidence. And three rows, three records really isn't enough. You really should have, I'm not going to say what the absolute amount is, but you should have a few more than that. So now what we do is we go back to inventory control, red herb, no prompt, green herb, we get the prompt, first aid spray, we get the prompt, go back to red herb, no prompt, go back to first aid spray. So yes, it's looking like it is working as intended. We just have to change the text of that message. So go to view and design view. So we're doing design view of the inventory control form. We click on product description. We click on the ellipsis. And we just change the message. Quantity is below minimum recommended amount. Quantity is below minimum recommended amount. We save that, close that. Again, we save our form, click on view. And we'll go to first aid spray. Quantities below minimum recommended amount. There we go. So now we have successfully demonstrated both iterations. The first iteration is when you're checking to a constant, a value across the board, doesn't matter which product you're looking at, just across the board, checked it to a constant. Second one is, okay, let's create a field that stores a value for each and every product and says what is the minimum recommended for that product. And again, it might be uh, because you go through different products at a different rate. You could also change it seasonally. So that's one of the other good things about this is that if say you go through 100 units of something per month during the summer, but you go through 500 units of something during the winter, you wouldn't, would want that number to change, and you really don't want to have to go into the script to do that. You'd want to be able to change an easily accessible table. Taking it one step further, that table could actually store a calculation based on the month or based on some other kind of historical data. So we could look at that in a later video. I just don't want to drag this one out too much, but I think that this is probably a good place to stop. So uh, the major functionality that we added is the message box. And as you can see, it's just MSG, BOX, and you put in your message, comes with a built-in button to close it. So that's really the only new functionality, as, or should I say the new kind of uh, access object that we looked at. The other functionality is pretty similar to what we've done before as far as uh, making a decision based on the value of a field on a form. So that should be about it for now. If you have any other requests, just let me know.